So it was 10 years ago today, the very first iPhone went on sale. Who to knew? Sell. Who well, knew what they would then do to our lives? If you'd asked me, in advance, if you'd asked me how long the iPhone had been around, I would have said quite a lot longer. Yeah, because it's just a... Well, there are obviously other brands, but lots and lots of people have them, and they are... It's almost synonymous. You know, like Hoover and Vacuum Cleaner? Yeah. Smartphone, iPhone. It's almost become like that, hasn't it? It does feel like that. But uh, it has had a massive impact, I mean, in terms of technology, in terms of what's achievable, along with other uh, iPhones. The, the, the terminology and technology has changed so much in such a short space of time. Can I tell you my random fact? Go on. That the first smartphone had a boy's name. What was it? Simon. IBM Simon. Really? Yeah, 25 years ago. This year, the first smart smartphone. Didn't know that? No, well, now you know. Oh, uh, there's yeah. another boy we should talk to about. He's, he knows much more. His name's Ben. Good morning. Morning, guys. Yeah, uh, can you believe it's 10 years since the first uh, iPhone went on sale? And it really did kick off that revolution in smartphones. Uh, yeah, can you believe it? Uh, 10 years ago. It might actually seem like they've been around forever, though. Uh, 10 years since the first iPhone went on sale in the United States. Now, we absolutely should say they weren't the first smartphones, but they did totally transform the industry. Um, Apple introduced the idea of an app store where you could download programs to do just about everything. You make calls, you send messages, you could order food, you could hail a taxi or do your banking. Uh, nearly anything you can think of, there is now pretty much an app for it. Uh, I just want to show you this graph because it shows just how sales of the iPhone took off. Now, they got off to, well, a pretty modest start. You can see in 2007, sales of just 3.7 million. But... Look at that growth, 232 million nearly by the year 2015. Uh, last year, there was a bit of a dip in sales. Some experts say that means we could have hit a peak whereby everybody who actually wants a smartphone actually has one until something pretty revolutionary comes along uh, to make us buy another one. Well, with me is Matt Hunt. He's an app developer for Apadme. They make some of the biggest apps, including Skyscanner, the BBC iPlayer radio app. Uh, Matt, good morning to you. Nice good morning. to see you. And we should just also say as well, just to prove quite how much technology has changed the way we do things, we're also broadcasting live on the BBC Breakfast Facebook Live page. You can see it just down the there. Uh, Sarah, our social media producer, is with us this morning. She's filmed there. Morning, Sarah. Uh, and Bradley there in the background, Tracy, our floor manager. So uh, all the team there this morning. So if you want to watch that, we're going to continue the conversation after this interview on Facebook Live. So we're very multimedia this morning. Uh, so Matt, nice to see you. Um, you brought some of these phones in with you yes, this morning. Yeah. They really give us an idea, don't they, of just how the market's changed. Absolutely. Um, as I touched on there, it wasn't the first. The iPhone wasn't the first smartphone, but nonetheless, it really did revolutionize the market. Absolutely. I mean, the industry, uh, you know, the smartphone industry was, was trying to get going from you know, like late 90s, you know, early 2000s. Um, things like, you know, you've got the phone on there, you've got the Ericsson R380, which was the phone that was first called a smartphone. You know, and in those days, you couldn't install apps on them, but they were touch screen. You could fold them out and you could make calls. Um, next one along, sorry. Um, and, you know, and exactly. So, so, so that was being developed. Um, and, and, and what we started to see in the industry early on was the idea that actually you could build your own apps and install them. But it wasn't really until the iPhone turned up that, that they showed a kind of different and better way that you could... <laughs> Sorry, I can't have a, have a look at that. I mean, It's amazing, it, yeah. It's that's, that's 20 years old. 20 years 20 old. Years old yeah. so so, and, and you were very much around at the time of, early, uh, I should in, say, in you, know, most, you were involved yeah. in it in the early days. Talk Absolutely. Me what yeah. So, so in the early days, I mean, what, what people say is, you know, we've, we've got phones and we've got PDAs, which were portable devices, mm. you know, that you could get email on and do calendar and stuff like that, bring them together and create smartphones. And so that's what we were building in the early days. But, but what Apple did when they came along is they, they showed the industry a slightly different way of doing it and the key difference they did was all around the interface how simple it was to use how elegant how nice it was people used to say used to stroke their iPhones because the screen <laughs> and this is it. yeah that was one of the first iPhones yeah so that's from our office yeah proudly on display and people used to just to love how clear the clear the clear the icons was how good the graphic was and also the fact that you could download apps so you could choose what else you wanted on your phone and even though you could do that on some of the smartphones around at the same time it's very difficult to do to put an app on the phone uh, and from a business point of view I imagine yeah. you know once it's changed the way that we do things I touched on the fact you can do mobile banking now you know it's not just about making calls and sending messages yeah. so for business they've really had to adapt how they have their websites how they interact with consumers yeah. through smartphones Absolutely, and I think the interesting trend that we, we've seen over, over the many years is that smartphones came along, we as consumers drove that 
re revolution. We want these things. They're great. We use them. And business suddenly said, hang on a second. Why can't we benefit from those in how we, how we do business? And, and even everything, you know, from, from education through to, to, to medical, you know, doctors today are saying, why can't we use smartphones and, 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 and benefit from them? Uh, and that dip in sales that we saw on the graph, yeah. you know, we sort of hit the peak at the top of the market mm. there. I mean, what is going to be the next big thing that will make us all think, you know what, the current phone that I've got, it's fine, but yeah. I want the next one? They, they'll always be enticing us with, 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 the, with the next great thing. And, 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 you know, there's some interesting stuff that, that, you know, you hear that's coming along. So we've been promised virtual reality or mixed reality. And we've been promised some of these things that will start to appear and, 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 and we can access and use in our phones. But it's very, very difficult. I mean, one of the things I've known and learned is never predict Apple. Never yeah. predict what they're going to bring because they will <laughs> always surprise you. Very good advice. Matt, it's really good to talk to you. Matt, have you. from Apadme. A, a quick reminder, of course, we're going to continue this conversation. We'll have a look at some more of these phones on the BBC Breakfast Facebook page, so uh, Facebook Live. Uh, more from me uh, after seven. See you then.